You see, my sisters do a lot of good work. Yeah, they always do. Like Lucy does, Elkie does, everyone does. Okay, back to pruning. Last section, although it's the biggest section, so we saved it for last. I um, feel like, hey, it's the last section. But this is Cabernet and Sangiovese, the big block. Tools of the trade, shears, saw. And uh, let's see, this row is done, so moving on to the next row. I'll set you down, give you a quick intro into how we do this. Each vine has, um, so this is the head here up top. These are the cordons, which aren't required for a vine. Um, one way or another, they need to have their arms, have some arms out. But so this is a cordon style, cordon and spur will be what I'm doing. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And obviously this is the vine and the root is down below. Uh, these are all shoots from last year. And these are going to be drastically removed down to just the bare minimum. And in fact, today's pruning, and each of these, uh, this initial pruning is setting the fruit load for the year. So this is something that you're, you are choosing in this moment. It's February, what September, October's harvest is going to look like. Now, obviously there are other variables, but the fruit um, will obviously be constrained to what we clip. But the main point of this is not so much that we actually are looking to, well, it's entirely that, but the main point here is focusing, focusing the vine on depth of character, maturity, uh, being able to ripen. The vine can only ripen so much fruit, so this is a great lesson in, in pruning. We talk about pruning and all kinds of uh, training, development, um, kinds of settings. And pruning is the important piece that where we decide, okay, what will I focus on? We can only do so many, only do so many things in life, right? Well, at least. And of course, that's different for each person. It's different for each vine. Um, the more, um, well, there's a number of variables there, but it's different for each vine. And so we are making very clear choices for each vine, one by one, on what we will allow to grow and at what distance to each other. Um, we don't want to clog up the process. Okay, there's more to do over there, but I'm not sure if you can see it, so I'll keep working over here. Um, this has got kind of a larger head here in the center, so I'm going to allow uh, this guy to grow up in the middle, whereas I would normally just have the cordon, which means arm, it's French, um, which means arm, and then these spurs. And I'm going up one, two buds, doing my best to not disturb them, because if I leave this here, but I knock the bud off, that, that bud is not going to grow. I mean, that makes sense. But as you work in the vineyard, trying to go quickly, sometimes uh, being cautious and careful, uh, sorry, Cautious and careful, sometimes that goes against the other goal of being expeditious, being quick. <clears throat> However, these two things need not be at odds. And obviously, if I was going to have one over the other, I would choose caution and care over speed. Even better when you can do both. All right. Sun's coming up over the mountain. That'll make a difference. It's cold, frosty this morning. All right. And this is such a great time to get a sense of how is the vineyard doing? Because I can see, well, we, we touch every plant, every single plant. And so, 
super important to get a sense of the health of the vineyard and each plant individually. I think it's easy to think of a vineyard as a whole, right? As one unit, one large entity, and in some senses it is. But obviously each plant is unique, has its own needs, does have an impact on the others, and so it has to be addressed uh, in both of those ways, with both a uh, ecological or environment as a whole and, and as, as individuals. Okay, today we're headed to the other vineyard site to, got a lot of work uh, maintaining that one. It's been derelict for a number of years, uh, so the new owners are friends and given us uh, <clears throat> access to that, but there's a lot to do. Every morning, I feed the chickens. On Thursday, I feed the chickens and the goats. So that is very exciting. Hi, hey, Dad. Family meeting time. <laughs> Now it's time to go up to the house for family meeting, slash what school we're doing today. Oh. I love our days, they're so fun. Getting to learn new things every day. Have fun. Have fun, I should say, with that and with that. And just the swings and family. So today's work is getting rocks, kind of a, um, similar to the no dig method, except we're doing the uh, no dig method for rocks, basically a, a weed barrier. We've, you know, thrown all these rocks out of the, the farming area over the years, and especially the first few years of getting all these rocks out of the rows and to the to the borders to different piles and now we're just about we've just about collected every rock on the property that's not doing some kind of you know fence uh you know shoring up you know we got for example trying to keep turkeys out 
you know, in higher spots where the fence comes uh, a little uh, deer fence or turkey fence comes a little bit uh, of a gap. So other than those rocks, we're pretty much out of rocks. Pretty much. I'm sure we've got a, we've got another project coming this summer uh, where we'll, we'll bring us some of the ground level for. Well, I, I won't mention it yet for a, a very exciting project. Until then, looks like I've uh, I got to find. Oh, we do have more rocks down at the very bottom end. Looks like that's where I'm headed next. So in our first layer, we have the cardboard, and then we're going to be, we have rocks to make a just go on top. And the cardboard is so weeds do not grow. And then we are going to put some topsoil on and then plant some flowers. What do you think of this project? Um, it's, um, it's cool work and I decided that we're going to grow some flowers on the other side of our garden. So at this moment, I am only allowed to drive the Kubota. I am almost positive I know how to drive the four-wheeler, but I'm not allowed to drive it. I haven't had it, I have never driven it, but with all this, every, all my other sibling, except for my little sister, driving it, I've learned. I'm pretty sure that is what makes you go forward. These are brakes, of course. I don't know which which one goes to the front, which one goes to the back. That's what I'll need to learn. But I know how to work this. There's I'm going, there's park, there's a verse, there's neutral. I have no idea what the L is. I'll have to learn that. Um Yeah. And I know where to check where your, check where your speed lit is, how fast you're going is there. And this thing right over here, uh, my sister's 13, and I'm gonna learn to drive it next, and I'm not gonna be 13. <laughs> All right, another morning, just kind of getting pieces here, there, sorted out. <clears throat> goats fed, chainsaw, chickens and goats are getting fed by the girls right now. Let's see, I gotta go clear the way to, to pull out the tractor's rototiller, big, big machine, uh, PTO driven, uh, clear some Madrone so I can get that thing out of the woods. <laughs> Uh, storage. Madrones just, just grow so fast um, and get to that in the, in the coming days. Alright, pulling on in here. <clears throat> I'll show you. I guess I'll stay back a little bit. Show you what I'm looking for here in the project. So I've got all these Madrones that come up and I've got to pull this rototiller out of the woods. Of course it's too heavy to pick up, so I'll need to attach to it with the tractor. But gotta get all this tangled mess. Oh. <laughs> gotta get all this tangled mess out of here first. Okay, just working on border patrol, clearing off the vertical line as much as I can with the chainsaw of these overhanging trees um, on this section of the <coughs> airstrip and bringing them out to grab them with the tractor or trailer and we'll see, see which tool we use for that. Just getting them all out here and accessible so we can pull them up fairly quickly. Um, 
we are working on getting access to our goat area, which eventually we would like to put in the root cellar. We have a lot of terrain over there. It's just been inaccessible because of a ravine. So we're putting in culverts, bringing in three quarter minus gravel to solidify that. Got some kitten time. <laughs> the hunters are out. So trucks coming today and then resurfacing some of the roads you know, the, the kind of a spring project every year to recover from the rains and just get the surfaces back up. As always, there's plenty of work to do at the farm. It is so hard not to get distracted with prioritizing uh, what needs to be done. Because sometimes the things that look bad are the things you want to change the first, but they're not the things that are actually the priority. For example, we have got to take care of the vines and get the cuttings. However, when I look around and see all the weeding that needs to be done, I could easily focus on that, but it will get done. It's just a matter of time. Oh, it's so fun to see all the new growth in the spring. Uh, something that looks just dead here, and then all this new growth, and it'll go up and over this. And then all of these guys growing. Pretty soon we'll have roses blooming. And one of my favorite things too in the spring is seeing the rosemary and the little purple flowers that, um, that bloom in the spring. Lily, how do you decide uh, what is good for a cutting? What is good for a cutting? Mm -hmm. I look at a few different things. Like this one should be fine. Well, it's a little curved. We don't want it very curved. So if I cut it here, it'll be more straight. And I'm looking for something that's about that thick. As thick as my pinky mm -hmm. and then I count one two three four five buds up cut it to the diagonal so that we know which sides up which sides down so you want something straight you want it fairly thick and you want it to look healthy bring peace expelled him from the family and turned him out to their home continues now we have Laurel up and eating breakfast what are you having this morning eggs and toast and I've gone over some math goals with Lucy and she's headed out to do her hundred cuttings dishwashers running and there's clouds in the sky Tomorrow, I can't believe tomorrow's gonna be 76. I keep saying that. <laughs> Time to give the chickens their squash. job for everyone as much as she wants to use the clippers right you want to use the clippers but they're not quite safe enough so you do other jobs like picking up the 
clippings and putting them in the back of the Kubota. I know. Mm-hmm. It's important. <laughs> That's not so great, but... <laughs> Let's get back to work. Looking good. These are happy. Seventy-five Tempranillo cuttings. I'm gonna head over to the sand um, and the sulfur dip. I'll set them over there so they can be stored for the next couple months before we plant them. Here comes Laurel. Yes. Your hands are cold? Yes, please. All right, oh, you're wet. Ooh, burr. Do you want to come over to the sand with me to see where we're gonna put these clippy, or these cuttings? Sure. Here, this is lovely sandbox for the cuttings. What? So over to the left are the Sangiovese and to the right are the Tempranillo. And these are Tempranillo, so I'm gonna set them here and they'll be dipped in the sulfur mix and then set in there and then Derek will bury them with the sand. What? What's that for? And the sand will keep them protected. It helps protect the cutting.